but God has given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit to, to listen to. Uh, the Bible says that he is a lamp unto our feet or and a light unto our path. That means that every time we're, we're faced with a, a, a fork in the road um, or how to treat people, or just how to live life, the Holy Spirit is that guiding light to help us to make those right decisions on how to live those lives. Amen? Amen. I love my wife. love her very dearly. And I know the Bible says, you know, love your wife as Christ has loved the church. And if I attempt to do that from my natural energy, I could be, I can tell I love her, you know, all the time and do all, you know, what I think she, you know, her love language is. But the Holy Spirit gives revelation as to what is really necessary for her to know uh, that she is loved. I'm a word of affirmation person and I'm a physical touch person. So I love to just run around and see her and, hey, baby, you know, be touchful. Uh, and I love to esteem her. But I've learned that while those things are okay for her, and I'm you know putting all this energy into that, really she just wants the floor clean. <laughs> and you know, the dishes washed. Yeah. And it's like in my natural strength, I don't want to do that. Like I just want to tell you how I feel and I want to show you how I feel. But for her. Mop the floor, <laughs> take out the trash. That's how I know that you love me. There are cookie crumbs. There are <laughs> food stains on the couch. Can we please get it clean? And I'm just like, ah. But that is a weakness for me. That is not my natural. And the Bible says this, that God, he pairs the weak with the strong. And it's, this is why it's important. Yeah. Uh, particularly in marriage, um, because it requires you to draw upon the strength of the Lord. How the Bible talks about um, marriage being that, like a three quarter um, braid. Um, that is the Bible. Please yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. I hate being wrong when I'm not here talking. Um, but it requires you to take heed to the voice of God when it comes to your relationships, because you could be trying to do like I said, I've discovered what love is for her. Now, in my natural strength, like I said, that's my weakness. I have no desire to do that at all. I'd rather pay somebody to do that. But for her, that means all the world. So when I draw upon the strength of the Holy Spirit, He causes me to be able to to do those things in an effortless manner because I'm reflecting off of His love. And therefore, I'm able with ease and with his strength to do those things for her. That same thing applies for how I interact with each and every last one of you people um, and how we all interact with each other. Listening to the spirit of God uh, allows us to live in an impactful way um, to be a blessing to other people. Amen? Amen. Um, Pastor Wendell said this to me uh, maybe about a month ago. We was walking out to our car and we were leaving service here. And I had asked him, I was like, man, how you doing? Because I had, you know, for the most part, when we talk to a pastor or when we talk to people of leadership, um, oftentimes we come to them and we're looking to get something from them. And for a while, I, I, in that moment, I told him, I was like, man, I'm sorry. I was like, we normally have really good conversations. Not like just, you know, just, talking to you, not to get anything from you, not necessarily counseling or wisdom or anything, but I just like talking to you. And we hadn't done it in a while. So I was just like, man, how are you doing? Because, you know, he had kind of mentioned um, about Pastor Clifton passing away. And I had never stopped to think about how he felt about those things. So I just wanted to encourage him and love on him. And uh, the thing that he said to me, whether he knew it or not, don't know now because it's going to court. Um, he said this to me as we were walking out to our car, and it really embodies 
um, the scripture as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. He said, we are all telling ourselves a story about our lives. And that story can either bring us peace or cause our blood pressure to rise. Mm -hmm. really, wow. I'm not that wow. really deep for me. <laughs> um, because in regards to how he felt about uh, Pastor Clifton passing, he could have went to a, a state of you know depression. He could have allowed those thoughts to just overtake him. He could have allowed the thoughts of the, you know the pandemic and all the different things uh, that have been going on in our society. He could have allowed those things to shape his idea of what the world looked like. But he chose to rely on what the Word of God says, and he has continued to draw upon what God has said outside of what the world circumstances is, whatever the, his personal circumstances were. So um, that really meant something for me um, because once again, who's fueling you? Where are you drawing your source of strength from? Bible says that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. God, when he, or when Christ died, the Bible talks about in Hebrews that God has provided a promise of rest. When I'm talking about strength, I'm talking about, uh, there's a story in Acts when the disciples, this was not long after uh, Christ had died, and he had revealed himself and he spent time with them, and then he ascended back into heaven. And he told them um, to wait up in this upper room because he was going to send the helper, which was the Holy Spirit. So they went to this place and they uh, congregated amongst themselves and they prayed and they waited for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, you have to understand that in this moment, like I said, this was maybe a month or something after Christ had died. The disciples, uh, Simon Peter, these guys were called out for being followers of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't, you know, they were, the people were accusing them and were looking for them so that they could also crucify these guys too. So there was a lot of fear and uncertainty and uh, you can say terror about where their lives were going to be. You know, because people hadn't forgotten about, you know, what had just happened. So in that moment, as they were spending time amongst themselves and praying, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came rushing uh, like a mighty wind and overtook them. And they became filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you, by a show of hands, have been filled with the Holy Spirit? Okay. I think... We all know what that feels like. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you feel a sense of supernatural empowerment. You feel a sense of carefree rest. You feel an abundance of love and peace. Uh, you feel in a sense that you can do anything. Amen. Your natural abilities, the gifts that God has given you, mm -hmm. they are enhanced through the power of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. And the thing about it, we've all spent some time in church where we've seen uh, the power of the Holy Spirit overtake people, and you know, people have different reactions and things of that nature. But God has uh, made it so that we can live our day, each and every day, moment by moment, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And that does not mean falling out on the floor and running around and screaming and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about a supernatural sense of peace and rest. That's good, bro. It means that no matter what your earth outside worldly circumstances are, you can face them knowing that you stand on the foundation of the finished work of Christ. Yeah. You stand on the foundation of victory. You feel victorious. When you pray, 
You pray victoriously. You yeah. pray from a place of thanksgiving. Yeah. You pray um, with command. Yeah. When you speak and you and, and you cast yeah. out things, it's it's not from uncertainty that it won't happen. It's from Ooh. it's from the power of God given that muscle to that voice of power. Um, it allows you to be at peace with people. No matter how they treat you, you can love people past their insecurities, past their failures. And the thing, the Spirit of God has a fragrance to it. People just know when well, the Spirit, the people of God know when you're speaking a language and when that aroma is on you. Because um, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. One of the things is, you can't get that Kool-Aid smile off right. your face. And people notice those things and they're like, why are you so happy all the time? And it's like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And that's not something that I'm conjuring up. That's something that I am standing on. Uh, so the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were overtaken by him. And the Bible says that they started to uh, pray in the spirit, and they started to pray in uh, all of these different languages. Now, what it did for Simon Peter, it empowered him with boldness, because prior to he denied Jesus three times and ran, you know, all of them ran, but you know, this, it says, with swearing and cursing, he denied Christ and he fled. After he was filled with the spirit, and the people and the people that saw them doing what they were doing, the Bible says that they thought that they were drunk. And Simon Peter was the one that came out and said, "You're not drunk. This is the spirit of, of the living God that is on the inside of us." And where he once was filled with terror and fear and uncertainty about his life and shame and guilt about what he had done, he was now standing filled with the spirit with strength, confidence, supernatural confidence, not about himself, but about who God is. And it, it emboldened him to preach the gospel effortlessly. The Bible says that over 3,000 people were saved in that moment because of what had happened to those guys in that upper room. That same thing happens for you and I today. Mm. When you're filled with the Spirit of God, it's easy to talk about Christ yeah. because like when people are like, why are you so happy? That they recently happened to me, not just um, uh, this week. Somebody was asking me, man, you just so filled with joy. What's what you so happy about? And I couldn't help but say, man, I'm filled with the spirit of God. In my natural sense, yeah. I'd be ashamed to do something like that because I don't want to be embarrassed and I don't want to be clowned on. But the spirit of God takes all of those things away. And he gives you his strength, his confidence. Oh, the Bible says that um, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of his good news. I'm not ashamed of what he's done for me because it is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Meaning that, that as I minister um, that gospel of grace and peace to a person, that message gives power to, 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 to break the chains of bondage over people's lives. When I'm filled with his spirit, I can properly love my wife and my children from a spiritual standpoint that I could not have conjured up in the natural. Yeah. And most of our life dealings with people, it's based on experience and how we learn and formulate how to treat, um, how to treat people. And sometimes those things work, sometimes those things don't. But when you're filled with the Spirit of God, He can whisper to you a supernatural word that says, this person likes cupcakes. Why don't you give that to them? And it may be something unexpected that will bless them in a way that, that will maybe break a yoke of bondage that you had no idea they were dealing with at that time. So listen to the Spirit of God. It's important to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. 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 You better preach. Hallelujah. I am the vine, 
you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I am you, you will bear much fruit. The Bible says, apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. So we know that in our flesh, the Bible says, dwell up no good thing. Um, when we depend on our own source of fuel or strength for our lives, Jesus said, you can do nothing apart from me. Um, I love this picture as, you know, the grapes flourishing from the vines that have, and, 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 the, and the roots that it's growing from. Um, and anytime you cut the grapes from, you know, the vines that it grows from, it has like a certain life expectancy. You know, you only have a certain amount of time that you can eat those grapes before they turn into, uh, uh, before, before they become shriveled up and turn into raisins. The raisins are disgusting. I don't know why I, anybody would eat them, but, you know, praise God. <laughs> But they die eventually. That same thing applies for you and me. When we sever ourselves from that spiritual vine of Christ, we got a life expectancy of, of when we have a, a energy expectancy um, or capacity that we can run on before. It's like, bro, sis, you're doing too much. You're taking too much from me, and I'm about to snap. And that's not a great place to be, uh, because apart from Christ, that you can do nothing. I love to teach. I love to build. I say it all the time. But I am not a good. I'm not great with um, administrative work. The numbers. I like the idea of it, but I procrastinate and I'm lazy when it comes to taking care of paperwork and stuff like that. So if I listen to the Spirit of God, He can lead me to the right person or give me the strength to do the things that I need to do at that time while still doing the things that He has gifted me to do. But when I'm separated from Him, then I feel that I have to take on those extra roles and responsibilities in order to keep the show going. So as I am bearing all of these different things, the weight of the world, um, I have to, like I said, continue to build this strength to keep the show going. And the thing about it, you can be successful at that thing, but it's a very hard life to live. Mm -hmm. And I found that not only are you irritable, because you're bearing all of those things, but you also become very frustrated and irritable with the people around you because you feel like they're not helping in your mess. Um, there's a story of um, Mary and Martha. Jesus and the disciples that came off the road from ministering, and they went and stayed with these two sisters. The Bible says that um, Martha was in the kitchen or in the place where she was preparing the food, preparing the serve. And her sister Mary did the opposite. She went and sat at the face or at the feet of Jesus to listen, to be in his presence, just to spend time with him. Because she, uh, she knew that he was the Messiah. They both believed that he was. But the Bible says that Martha was frustrated with her sister. It says that... Um, not only did she rebuke her sister, but she rebuked Jesus. She said, why aren't you, um, why aren't you, don't you care that my sister is not helping me to serve? And Jesus replied, Martha, Martha, you are burdened with many things, but one thing is necessary, and your sister has discovered it, and it will not be taken from her. And that thing that, that she discovered was that sitting at the feet of Christ, drawing from him, that was the thing, the right thing to do at that moment. To receive from him all that he had had for her, that provided her the strength, the wisdom, all that she needed to do when the time came. Whereas, like I said, with Martha, 
she thought that the right thing to do was to serve Christ. But Christ was saying, I am here to serve you. You need to be drawn from me. Amen. 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 Um, so how does it happen? Um, how do we get to these, this place of callousness? Um, one of the symptoms that I have learned, and I'll say this, the more and more you become conscious of when you're at rest with God versus when you're not, it's easier to just get back into that place of rest and peace with him. So one of the things that I've discovered is that when I pray, when I'm like severed from Christ or when I'm severed from that spirit, when I'm not drawing upon his strength, one of the things that, um, that I've noticed is that I'll pray, but I can feel in my heart a sense of hardness. I can feel, I feel like the prayers don't extend beyond the wall. And it's not that God isn't listening to me, but it's my own pride that's keeping me from really being open to him. Um, the, the scriptures here in Hebrew says, as it has been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Um, verse 16 says, who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all uh, those Moses led out of Egypt? Talk about the Hebrews. It says, and with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest? Yet not to those who disobeyed. Verse 19. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Unbelief takes very takes uh, many forms, but at, at its core, um, unbelief is pride. It is you deciding that I have the answer, or I have the solution. And the scripture says that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It really doesn't take much for you to get to a place where you start to harden your heart towards the Lord. That could be uh, as simple as looking for an answer, praying for it, and not waiting for the answer. That could just be just, God, you're taking, taking your time. I ain't getting it. I need it right now. Pride says I need it now, so I'm going to figure it out myself. That is a small hardening of the heart. Forget all the stuff of, you know, adult entertainment. and We talk about those things, but let's talk about the subtle things. Anytime that you look to depend on your own wisdom that you've developed over the years, that you think is right for a particular situation, that is depending on your own strength. Amen. And the more and more you start to do that, the more and more you start to, it's like going days without brushing your teeth. Black just starts to build and build and build. And before you know it, there is hard and black in between those places. To the point where it causes gun disease and all this other kind of stuff. And then if you got enough sense, you go to the doctor who can break all that mess up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. The scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That means every situation that you can think of. And I, you have to know those things. I'm not saying some people just go super extreme with it. Lord, what clothes should I wear today? I'm not going to go out until, I'm not talking about being that silly, but I'm talking about how I approach management, how I approach dealing with my spouse when we've had a falling out, how I just choose to live life. Uh, sometimes it's about what I choose to receive through my eye and ear gate. Lord, is this really, you know, the Spirit of God, when you're watching certain stuff or listening to certain stuff, the Spirit of the Lord 
will start to touch on you like, you know, this really ain't something that you should be partaking of. Mm -hmm. And you have a choice in that moment. You can either continue to view and listen to whatever you're doing, or you can turn that mess off and, and get into a place of worship. But those opportunities, those small opportunities, um, those moments, and the choices that you make in those moments will determine whether you harden your heart towards the Lord or whether you become more sensitive to Him. Um, First Timothy, I'm not sure if I'm going to read all of this. That's a lot. I'll go to this. Yeah. <laughs> say go for it. All right. Since you beg for it. <laughs> this is Paul uh, writing to his, this, uh, I guess his disciple Timothy. And it says here in verse 3, I thank God who I serve, who I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, uh, as without ceasing. I remember you in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your, of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine, the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, or Louise, and your mother, Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. He's talking about he has received Christ, and he uh, the finished work of Christ is in Timothy. Verse 6 says, therefore, I remind you to serve the gift of God, which is in you, uh, through the laying on of my hands. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. When we get to that place of callousness, the more aware you become of when you're in that place. Like I said, the easier it is to just draw from your spirit. And he says here, to stir up that gift. How do we stir up that gift, that promise of rest? God has provided the word of God. He's provided praying in the spirit. He's provided songs of worship. All of these things bring us back to a place of remembrance of who God is, how much he loves us, how much he wants to fellowship with us, how much he wants us to be in his presence. And, uh, as you become aware of the thing that really does it for you, the easier it is for you to just enter into that place. I like songs of worship. I like old spiritual hymns um, regarding the gospel. So, uh, and I like to pray in the spirit. So as I'm worshiping, I'm being reminded of how good he is. That gospel is penetrating that calloused heart and breaking up that stony heart and before you know it, I'm in a place where I'm telling the Lord, Father, I have alienated myself from you. You haven't left me. Your goodness has not stopped uh, being a coin. I have decided to shade myself from you. So in my humility, Lord, I am receiving from your table of grace. I am receiving from your abundance of your love. As I first received Christ as my Lord and Savior, Lord, I am receiving that which you have for me today in this moment. Right. Fill my heart with your substance of spirit, peace, truth, and life. Yeah. And as I wait upon the Lord, he becomes my strength. Without me even, why is it? What, it just happens. As the yeah. scripture says, it came like a mighty rushing wind. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. It does not have to be a grandiose thing. You don't have to wait till Sunday to receive and draw on his spirit. In your moments of solitude, laying in your bed, I don't care where you're at, if you have work, you can just steal a moment and say, Lord, I receive from you. Matter of fact, here is a challenge for you. If you're feeling that way, or if you're ever feeling that way, a simple prayer, Lord, I have alienated myself. Lord, I surrender myself to you. 
I receive all that you have for me. I receive your spirit. I receive your truth. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. And he will fill you. He will give you all that you need in that moment. He will give you that rest. He will give you that joy. He will give you that peace. He will give you the right ideas, making the right decision for life. Amen? Amen. Really good. Really good. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm done. All right. I'll end up with this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's Psalms 91 and 1. That entire psalm is talking about a person who has made God their dwelling place. It means that God is their daily bread, their daily fellowship. Um, it's a beautiful thing. As you're walking in the spirit, choosing to be filled with the spirit is easier than choosing to eat a Caesar salad because it's already been prepared for you. Um, and as you are in that place, you're in love and in fellowship, you find yourself just naturally talking to God throughout the course of your day. You find yourself naturally thinking or supernaturally thinking about scriptures and things uh, just to pick apart, just to discover how much more he loves you in a way that you've never seen before. So yeah. that's all I got, guys. That's good. Um, yeah. 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 Was it impactful? Yeah. That's what's up. I'm happy to hear you. Um, so here is a call to action. If you have been feeling calloused in your heart, um, if you've been feeling hardened towards the Lord, if you felt separated, understand it is not him that has changed. It is only you that has decided to live life according to your own standards um, in the way that you thought best. Um, and you've had great intentions about it, but you know, some, you know, the Lord is right. <laughs> the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. So his way is always the best way. So if that's you, let's all just bow our heads and pray and ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit. Amen? Well, repeat after me. Gracious Father. Gracious Father. Lord, I, Lord, I have separated myself, separated myself from your goodness. Your goodness. You always want to be good to me. You always want to be good to me. You always want to love me. You always want to love me. Lord, I see that now. Lord, I see that now. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. That Christ has died for me. That Christ has died for me. And all of my sins. And all of my sins. All of my bad decisions. All of my bad decisions. All of my mistakes. All of my mistakes. Was placed on the cross with Christ. Placed on the cross with Christ. Lord, He took my place. Lord, He took my place. So that I could have fellowship with you. So I could have fellowship with you. Lord, I receive that love. Lord, I receive that love. I receive your spirit. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For breaking up the stony heart. For breaking up the stony heart. Thank you for giving me a heart of flesh. Thank you for giving me a heart of flesh. Thank you for filling it with your spirit. Thank you for filling it with your spirit. I receive all that you have for me. I receive all that you have for me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say? Everybody say? <laughs> Just an hour now? What do you say? What's up? All right, I'm done. Is there a... Oh, okay, we got announcements. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.